Hi, welcome to a video by Robojax. We are going to build a motor driver using TIP20 and TIP25 transistor. First, we are going to build it on a breadboard so we can control the motor. It's now in CCW. Break. And then CW, now it's 50%. Then I'm going to explain the schematic and we designed the PCB on the PCBX EDA service and we will place order for PCB. Then we are going to place order for a fully assembled project using PCBX. Let's get started with this. Now let's understand how the DC motor is controlled. This is our DC motor and this is our battery. We just connect a, a switch in between uh, the motor and the battery, either the positive wire or the negative one. But most, uh, most of the time preferred in here and the positive so we can turn it on and off. Now this uh, terminal is connected to the positive. The left side is connected to the negative. And in this case, if it is connected uh, in this configuration, let's say a certain motor is rotating at CCW or counterclockwise. Uh, if we switch the positive, which was before connected in here, now we bring it to this terminal and the negative, which was in here, move it to the other terminal, the motor will rotate in the clockwise direction. Before it was counterclockwise, now it changes the direction of rotation. So we learned that if we change the polarity of the power to the motor, the direction of rotation changes. And here, for this motor, I'm connecting the negative to this terminal and positive to this terminal. Pay attention. As you can see, it goes counterclockwise. Now if I switch it, connect it to this terminal, the negative is now here, the positive is switched. As you can see, it's going clockwise. Now, the question is, why can't we just connect the motor directly to Arduino ESP32 or Raspberry Pi, whatever it is that you're uh, using? The answer is that the microcontroller cannot supply enough power to the motor uh, because this motor, even if it's 5 volts and the output is 5 volts, this will not be able to run it because the amount of current which is the, the unit is ampere, is not enough. This will supply, for example, 10 milliampere or 15 or maximum 20 milliampere, but this will need 1,200 milliampere connected directly. And we need something called driver, which gets the uh, signal and amplifies it many, many times. And so we can control the motor. Let's see how uh, each bridge works. This is our motor, the positive is connected to VCC. This is our power supply, battery, or whatever source you have. And this side is connected to the ground. This is a symbol for the ground or negative terminal. Now, if we, uh, in this case, let's say this motor is rotating in CCW direction or CW clockwise direction, the positive of the motor is connected to VCC. Now, if we change it, now the positive of the motor is now at the bottom, a negative is at the top, which is connected to the positive. So in this case, now the motor will rotate in the counterclockwise direction, which we just explained. This is a bipolar junction transistor, which has collector, emitter, and base. It has three terminals. This is NPN, but doesn't matter. I'm just giving you an example. So this transistor can be used as a switch, and I'm just creating a similarity between these. So one side of switch is collector, the other side is emitter, and base is where you push the switch. So you can uh, turn it on or turn it off, like that. We create a configuration like this with four switches. You see SW1, switch one, two, three, four, connected to the motor, 
like this. This is called H bridge because it looks like H. So, and if we turn this switch on and this switch on, switch one and switch four, you will see that the current cannot go here because this is not connected. So the current will pass through switch one, passes through the motor, goes through switch four, it is completed to the ground, and the, as a result, this motor will rotate, for example, in clockwise direction. But if we turn this switch one and switch four off and turn on switch three and two at the same time, these two switches, then the current which before was coming to here, you see the VCC positive was connected to the negative. Now positive is connected through this because this is off through this to the positive. This is now not connected, so it goes through the motor and exits from the negative terminal and connects to the negative. As a result, this will now rotate in counterclockwise. Before uh, it was rotating clockwise, but now it goes counterclockwise. So using four switches, we can uh, control a motor easily. And as I mentioned, for instead of switch, we can use a transistor as a switch, so we can quickly turn it on and off and control the motor. This configuration also can be used for a break or quick stop, where switch four and two is turned on, and if, when because the motor was rotating, it generates energy, and it uh, itself uh, it slows itself faster. Or you can do it like this. So three and two is on because this positive just goes and circulates. There is nothing connected to the ground, or in this case, nothing is connected to the VCC. So there is no harm, but it can stop the motor quickly. Now. The problem of course, if you connect or if you turn on S3 or S4, you see the positive doesn't go here, it passes through these two and there is a short circuit and oops, so the fuse will blow up or maybe the wires, there will be fire or something. And the same thing if you do turn on uh, switch one and two at the same time, the same thing will happen and, and there will be fire or if there is a fuse, the fuse will blow up. So this is how uh, H-bridge works. So I've used a PCBX EDA to draw this. Now to understand the project better, let's have a look at the schematic. Uh, we're using these four transistors here. These are the Darlington transistors. TIP-125, TIP-125, these are PNP, and the bottom one is the uh, low side is TIP-120. Uh, these are NPN Darlington transistors. Here's a data sheet for the TP-120-125. The top row is all NPN, the bottom is all PNP. And the pens are mentioned here base collector emitter, one, two, three. The big difference between each transistor is this table that you can see. These are NPN and these are PNP. Some people call them negative and some, uh, and the other one is positive. So the only difference is 120 and 125, the uh, collector base voltage is 60 volts, collector emitter is 60, uh, for this one is 80, and the third row is 100. The rest is exactly the same except the voltage. And maximum co collector current is 5 ampere, and peak current is 8. So 5 ampere is the current that you have to have in mind with heatsink. To drive the PNP transistors, we used 2N2222 NPN transistor. Here is a data sheet for 2N2222 transistor that we use here. The collector emitter voltage can be up to 40 volts, and that is determining our uh, operating voltage for this module. 
so we cannot go above 40 volts and that's the maximum that's why I labeled it as 26 but you can go up to 40 volts to we use this NPN transistor to drive them the same way on this side so this has an H configuration that's why it's called H bridge so here this is our power supply some capacitors to filter the output and all the trans uh, resistors use R1 kilo ohm because this is just a switch there is no complexity in calculation we go with saturation these are all 1 kilo ohm and here for the pens that is connected to Arduino we have pulse width modulation pen pass pulse width modulation 1 enable 1 pulse width modulation 2 enable 2 for high side low side and then high side low side that and then we have one ground we have also one resistor and uh, LED to show us if there is power on the board and then we have this uh, rotary encoder uh, with three pens uh, ready in case if we want to use rotary encoder to control the speed or maybe for other application. The motor is connected between the collector of uh, both PNP and NPN and on this side collector and collector because uh, this is PNP. And for the back EMF of the motor, we have four diodes that are protecting these transistors. The diodes should have the same or a little higher current rating than the motor. If your motor needs at that certain voltage, let's say 2 ampere, then please place a 2 ampere rated diode here. And these are preferred to be Schottky diode with fast recovery time and lower voltage drop and we could create also PCB like that and I'm going to show you how to draw this briefly placing some components and also we could see the uh, 3D design of our circuit here the only thing missing is the rotary encoder which we did not have the model for it at that time now let's have a look at the wiring diagram I have simplified it this is the left side of the bridge each bridge with one driver so the top of the breadboard is connected to positive the power for, for the motor the bottom is ground and we have connected this wire so also this blue is ground now these two this is base this is collector the middle pin and then emitter emitter of PNP is connected to positive using green wire to this point and in here and between collector and emitter we have uh, this protection uh, protecting diode that cathode is facing this way to the positive and uh, NPN low side this is the high side and this is the low side the diode is facing the other way which is connected now this is 2 and 22 22 uh, this pin is emitter connected to the ground collector is connected using 1 kilo ohm to to the power and this is the collector which is uh, driving the base of the PNP transistor so I have duplicated this portion and this portion which we have now the full uh, uh, wiring diagram exactly this was connected from collector to this point from collector of this we have one wire connect driving the base of the uh, second the right side of the H driver our battery can be between 6 to 24 volts positive is connected there negative is in here the motor is connected between the collector of this and these two the collector this blue wire is connector and also the other orange wire is connected to the collector of these two which is at this point where the blue wire is connected at the middle we have a base of this transistor the low side these two NPN and these two NPN are connected using these wires and then don't forget this ground so pin 2, 3, 4 and 9 pay attention here pin 2 is just regular pin pin 3 has this tilde its pulse width modulation enabled at the same way 8 and 9 
Then with a, for example, if you connect 9 to the pin 7, you will not be able to control the speed of motor because it, it does not have pulse width modulation capability. So here is the breadboard wiring. This is a positive, this is negative, which will be connected to uh, 12 volts. The motor is connected using these two wires, which are connected at the middle pin. The middle pin is collector for both. And here, the rest of the wiring is exactly as I have shown in the wiring diagram. And the four pins have been connected to pin 2, 3, 8, 9, and ground. Now let me explain the code. I've, I've defined pulse width modulation 1, enable 1, pulse width modulation 2, enable 2, as pin 9, 8, 3, and 2. And these are the pins for pulse width modulation, must have this tilde or pulse width modulation, otherwise you will not be able to control the speed. We have defined two variables for CW, CCW, so it will make it easy to uh, uh, use and don't have to remember. These are the prototype for the two functions at the bottom of the code. Inside the setup, we initialize the serial monitor, print this text. Using pen mode, we define all these pens as output. And here is the loop. When we call, uh, when we want the motor to rotate at 50% in CW direction, we say motor CW and 50, separated with comma. So this will run the motor at 50%. This value can be between 0 to 100, which means it's just a percent. Uh, so we run it for five seconds, and then stop. We call stop, which is at the bottom of the code for two seconds in this example. Then we go CCW at 80% for five seconds and break. I try to accommodate break and stop. Break was supposed to stop the motor very quickly. It seems in this case it's not that effective, but I have implemented anyways. Now let's have a look at the stop. All the pins go to low, so this will stop. And then if we uh, uh, call this function called break, we have high low, high low. When we call motor with CW or CCW with a speed, it comes here using map, we convert that speed which is from 0 to 100. We will convert it using this map calculation and make it a value between 0 to 255. The result of this calculation is a value between, from 0 to 255 stored here. And then if the direction is CW, we print this text. And then using analog write, we pass the speed analog right and then the rest is low low high using digital right else if it's not CD, CW it's CCW we do this so pulse modulation 1 which was had this value now it has low value pulse modulation 2 which had low value now it has this value and the other pins are the same way have changed so this was a full explanation of the code here is a demonstration on the breadboard I've connected the power, the two wires of the motor is connected, and here Arduino is also connected. My power is not connected yet, let me show you the power first. So as you can see it's around 12.2 volts. The code is already running. We will see the motor and also we'll see the data and direction and at the bottom. Let me connect this. I just reduced the voltage so it makes less noise so I can talk. changes the direction and slowly the speed increases maximum and then brake clockwise now and then counterclockwise
Now let me go 12 volts. Well, 12 volts, this motor consumes 1.27 ampere. This project that you are watching is produced using high quality products from PCBX. PCBX can produce your PCBs or you, they can do full assembly PCB. At the moment for each new user they offer 10 PCBs for a dollar. Or you can do full assembly of uh, 10 PCBs for free. The process is very simple. You click on PCB code, upload your Gerber files, review your product, select the options in terms of quality of material, number of layers, thickness and tons of other options and place your order. You can draw your schematic by selecting the components then design it the way you want it, preview it as a 3D model, once you are satisfied you can click place order, either place order PCB or place order for PCBX of full assembly. If you select PCB, for example, you don't need to upload the Gerber file or anything. All the information that comes directly from uh, the EDA, you will see all the layers of your Gerber file. You can also view it in 2D and also you can preview the 3D of the PCB. Add it to the cart and place your order. If you wish to place order for high quality fully assembled project, click on order and order PCBA. The same as the PCB, you will have options. You have the option to preview it, preview the Gerber file, preview the 2D, preview 3D of your project, select the component based on the type and quality and request for the code. They will contact you about the cost or, or you can use the free assembly of 10 PCB option here. The link is below the video. You, you can click and place order. Now let's create our PCB. First we are going to do the schematic. Go to PCBX.com, click here, Products and Capability, PCBX EDA, and then click here. If it prompts you for username and password, create an account. I'm already logged in. So this is called Workbench. Click on plus sign or on this button anywhere. We will create a new project. I'm pressing F11 to go full screen. Let's name it. H bridge T TIP at 120 TIP 125 so so this is our project this components we click here and let's type TIP 120 press enter the first one with the green is the ST semiconductor click and then click maybe twice for two transistor. Go again, TIP125 and enter. Again, we select the ST semiconductor. You see the 3D model is here. So the schematic, the footprint, I can click and see it and then place. Add uh, 2N2222 transistor. So select the TO92 and enter. So we will have two transistors. 
let's insert one kilo ohm resistor for each uh, and then we need one for the VCC one for the base of this uh, let's connect a uh, connector click on connectors header and wires and 2.54 that is the footprint size and then we need to have five wires so from here enter five and select five you see they are not ordered accordingly so one five two five three five and then five so it's okay number of positions and this is the one that let's get female So, yes, so this is the one I'm clicking here. So I've inserted most of the components and the name should be somewhere. So click and then hide it. I'm right clicking and moving the screen. So this is the one. We need two of this, one for the motor, one for the power supply. One and then two. Uh, let's call this motor and then let me hide this piece. G1, let's call this as well motor G2 power supply or just power enough and let's hide this bring this up and then hide the port number this kind of resistor uh, say one and space k one kilo and then the size 0805 once selected one kilo ohm now let's fix this or one hide the part number put the one kilo ohm closer to the body and press R to rotate it just connect it like that and then put a ground here undo and after that you can move the ground farther away or make it like this we need to connect these together press okay so now this one I'm pressing shift and X so this is flipped shift X now I believe this these, these are too far I press R to rotate it, connect this here, 
connect this to click and move it if you are unhappy with the position and then bring a ground And then let's go to PCB. And click on this button, update to PCB. Update. These are our components. I'm going to create 8 by 5. So let's click here, select the outline. And here it says, draw. You can select place. You see the unit is mill. Just click here and make it millimeter. So now I can click at the origin, and this is the va uh, size that it has created for us. Then now you can change it. So let's say 80. Uh, 50, the size increased by 80, and when I say merge to outline, it disconnects the rest and it becomes our PCB. First, our connector, I'm going to connect put the connector here. So let's create four holes. First, click on this icon and go to routing via route and then click. This is the size of the hole. We want to create a larger one, five, and then the maximum. We are setting just the maximum. Save, close, and now click here and, sorry, click and select via. Oh, it doesn't show the grid. Grid line. And I want to set it at as 0 0.125. And let's click. Now we can select this to say that this is 5 and that is 4. So I'm going to make 2 and 2 square on this side. Now I can click on 3D and let's see if the components have the model, we can see our 3D board. One, uh, so I'm pressing W to go to the wire or V to the wire. Right now I'm going to go wire and then this is bottom layer, I'm going to go with the top layer. And because that's a power, I'm going to go one point, let's go two. It says 1.27 is the maximum, 1.27. So this is the negative. bottom. Let's create that. Go to the bottom layer, 1.25, and then
click on 3D. place order with PCBA that's assembly if you just want the PCB you can go with this for PCB now for the PCB here is a Gerber file if you want the 2D that's the 2D because we want just PCB if you want the 3D and look at the back I can see that the text shows in reverse what are we supposed to correct it or this is incorrect because when I go here for 3D this text looks good and this text also is readable right now let's go for 10 hmm this is a promotion that's one dollar now I'm clicking on order and this time I'm going to select PCBA. We will see a lot of parts does not exist. So this is it. RJ3. This part is missing. So this is, I'm going to install it because I could not find it. And this is now one kilo ohm resistor is this one from previous order. As you can see, the price is 6.5 six and a half cents that's it correct everything is correct I'm going to check out I'm going to select bank transfer proceed to check out so it has been submitted this is a PCB produced using PCBX service excellent quality and craftsmanship and this is a fully assembled PCB that is done by PCBX so this is the exact PCB with components on it this is my first PCB that I designed so it has a lot of shortcomings but it's working as you can see uh, the quality of print and production is amazing. I'm very pleased with this. Uh, I've, 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 I've inverted the rotary encoder here. If we want to control the speed using rotary encoder instead of variable resistor, this would be uh, much better. Now to, to explain it, we have I've labeled here. I will provide you the I will provide you the full. A Gerber file for this so you can print and place order uh, from PCBX. 
this is the motor output, you will crank your motor, the polarity will be determined because this can change the polarity, that's why I did not put the polarity, so you find out which way is better suited for your application, and this is the power, the negative and positive have been labeled, these are the back EMF diodes that are protecting these um, transistors, if you wish to use some kind of uh, heat sinks, like this, three pins are for the rotary encoder, for pin A, B, and C, and we have the five pins here. You can connect the data, your Arduino or Raspberry Pi, whatever you have, at this pin, at this header, the left pin is ground, and then passes modulation two, enable two, passes modulation one, enable one. There is no other connections on this board. Let me now demonstrate it. The code have been loaded. These two wires are connected to power. So I set it to 12 volts. <coughs> two wires, these two wires have been connected to motor using these two connectors. So let me connect the power. Now the code is loaded, as you can see at the bottom, you see the direction and the speed, but I'm going to connect this and hold it. So it's not red. 50%. It was 50%. Speeding up and then repeating. Thank you for watching this tutorial from Robojax. If you learned something and found this useful, please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of YouTube. If you have comment or question, please post it in the comment section below. I try to answer and reply. And don't forget to subscribe so you get updates of my upcoming videos.